there's a lot to love about being a Barnes & Noble bookseller. And one of the best parts of the gig for this collection of Barnes & Noble booksellers is picking the books that we feature in our Discover Great New Writers program. So there are the books you read and there are the books you experience and those are the books we tap for our Discover Great New Writers program. That's roughly 50 books a year from a pool of a thousand possibilities. We're looking for books that wow, books that break hearts and open minds, books from writers who are not yet household names. And this is the story of how we pick the fantastic, fabulous, amazing books of our summer 2019 season. So we're at the halfway point, right? So I just want to run through the list of what we've got because this is going to be a killer summer. We have The Confessions of Franny Langdon, the Italian novel that everyone loves, The Family Saga. Bobby <laughs> Hundreds is in, and yes, they will have a jacket by the time you see this. The Darwin Affair, Ben Apfel Girls, we're stoked about that too. Gods of Jade and Shadow, Mayan Mythology, this is going to blow people's minds. And of course, Uriah mm -hmm. Heep. Right? Books about books, man. We all love them. Russian Cosmonauts. Ocean Vuong, who broke our hearts wide open. So we are in really good shape. Steven, you want to start? I read uh, Pray for Travelers. Two girls from high school. They don't really know each other, but they one girl's popular, one girl's not. At some point, she disappears, and nobody knows what happens. The popular one? The popular one. And so it bounces back and forth between present day and her past, mm -hmm. the, the narrator's past. You don't know what happens. Every At the end of almost every chapter, the author has dropped a little hint and we're waiting to see what happens. The writing was so fantastic, I got drawn in right away to it. This great, great sense of place reminded mm -hmm. me a bit of Idaho, because mm -hmm. it is Nevada, it's the teeny tiny town, and it was funny, Stephen and I were talking yesterday, that we were both Googling to see if these places were real, mm -hmm. and couldn't find them, but <laughs> you're into the characters, and... Uh, there's violence in here that's kind of Cormac McCarthy-esque. I feel like this could appeal to a, like, a really wide range of readers, um, so I'm really excited mm -hmm. about that. So this is a little bit of the girls' audience, right? It's maybe a bit of girls, it's a bit Ohio, it's a bit Idaho. All right, so Prayer for Travelers, definitely in, we're agreed, mm -hmm. yeah? Okay. All right. Link like of the eye. Link like of the like eye. That. I'm not normally a big memoir kind of person. Neither am I. And I, I barely <laughs> I put it down. It. I cried yeah. in at least two or three spots. Other people who enjoyed It's Not Yet Dark will just adore this. Okay, so who had Blink of an Eye? Anyone on the phone besides Melissa who had blink of an eye? No, I didn't. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're agreed again. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 All right. So let's put that in as well. Uh, I read How Not to Die Alone. There's some really snappy humor, in, in my opinion. I mean, it's kind of inspirational. So I, I think we have a wide customer base in which to sell this. I found it kind of the sensibility of the Joshua Ferris, but more like Oh, the yeah, yeah. Jo jo like Joshua the Ferris. Good. Yeah. I hear what you guys are saying, and it definitely would sell to that customer. I'm just not a British fan. I had the last book part. Oh, good. I've been waiting for more reads on this. 1980s. There's a 20 something girl who becomes an assistant for a writer. It read like your standard girl wants to make it in the literary world drama. And I don't know if it's necessarily discovered either. Uh, certainly an interesting story, but kind of one that I feel like I've read before. So I'm going to say no. I found it a perfect capsule of that young and in a new workplace and finding your own own way. One of the things that I liked about it and that I feel makes it different from those others, oh, I'm going to take the literary world by storm and all that, is that she gets this assistant job and she's among all these writers and seeing the submissions come in and all of this, and she quickly says, maybe I'm not. Things that intrigue me the most about this is even though it's set in the 80s, I think anybody who's reading it now at that age can feel that what am I doing with my life post-college kind of feel. But at the core of it, it's also about discovering your path. She's so. figuring herself out and sort of realizes that, which I thought was refreshing. I did finish The Most Fun We Ever Had, loved it. This was so good. I mean, it's over 500 pages, but I didn't want it to end. This is a character-driven book where readers are going to get so connected. Even though there are shocking moments, it still feels like this is possible. The flaws, the fact that they are so flawed is what makes them the most relatable. I mean, everybody can relate on some level to all of the characters. So let's put awesome. in the most fun we ever had. How Not to Die Alone, we could turn this into something Yay. amazing. <laughs> readers are going to love this. Blink of an eye, so much love. Much love. And then A Prayer for Travelers, which I cannot personally wait to see how readers are going to respond to this. And it will have a jacket. Yep. This is awesome. You guys did a great job.